In this clip, we're going to look at the example of a parabolic cylinder, um, sort of a solid cylindrical chunk, and we're going to uh, use the divergence theorem again to simplify, finding the outward flux of a vector field. And the vector field we're looking at is this guy right here, which looks like a bit of a monster. But one of the key reasons why this is a good candidate for using the divergence theorem is that the uh, y component, the nasty part of the y component, is actually constant with respect to y. So it'll vanish when we take divergence. And the uh, nasty part of the z component is constant with respect to z, right? There's no z term appearing in it. So it will also vanish when we take the divergence. And then the region that we're going to be looking at is this one here with z equals 1 minus x squared. Uh, the z equals 0 plane, the y equals 0 plane, and uh, the slanted plane x plus y equals 2, which is where we get this uh, portion here from. Okay, so let's see. So we're asked to find the uh, flux over the boundary of this region E, here I'm going to call it E, um, of the normal component of F with respect to S. So then, by divergence theorem, this is the triple integral over E of the divergence of F dV. All right, so let's see. Now I'm going to need to figure out how to set up this integral. So um, it looks to me like the most natural thing to do would be to do uh, the dy integral first. Uh, then everything is going to collapse into this region. I mean, the shadow of this is going to end up being this this region right here, which looks like a fairly easy one to set up. Uh, if I did dx first, then I'd end up looking at some region shape like this to set up, which I guess that's not too bad. You could also set this, if you set it up doing dy first, it would still be elementary. Um, and if we did dz first, it would be a nightmare. So if, as seen from above, so here you are, little eye in the sky looking downward, if you did a dz integration first, uh, you'd end up with something that looked like this, and it would be non-elementary because you'd have this one part coming from the uh, slanted plane, and then the rest of it would be um, coming from the parabolic cylinder around here. And yeah, neither one of those are gonna be pretty to set up, and there's two of them, and it just, yeah, disaster, start to finish. Okay, so back away from that one. All right, so we're gonna do, um, Let's see, so what is the divergence? So we ddx of this is y, ddy of this is 2y, because that part's gone, and ddz of this is 0. So we have a very nice and simple divergence. We have uh, 3y, I guess. Um, yeah, here, I'll just write it out as y plus 2y plus 0. There's the divergence. And OK, so we're going to do dy first. So we're going to be going from the uh, purple plane here out to the slanted plane here. So that's going from uh, y equals 0 up to y equals, and then we take this one here and figure out that's y equals 2 minus z. So that's going to be 2 minus z for our upper bound of, of integration there. OK. Um, now let's see. We're going to do. Uh, give myself a little space. Um, now we have to figure out how to set up this region. And um, <clears throat> let's see, I think we'll go uh, vertically like this. So that's going to be dz. So I'll put dz in there next. Um, and so this is going to be going then from uh, z equals 0. And then we're going to stop somewhere on this curve here, which is z equals parabola. So let's look around for parabola, and we find this one. OK, so this is going to be 1 minus x squared. So we're going to go from uh, 0 to 1 minus x squared. All right. And then let's see. So then we got to figure out where we get those slices. And we get our first one here at um, x equals minus 1, and slice, 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 slice. And the last one comes through here at x equals 1. So we're going to be going from minus 1 to 1 dx. OK, 
So now we've got it set up in Cartesian coordinates and it looks like straightforward plug and chug. A little bit snarby, but it shouldn't be too bad. So we've got integral from minus one to one, integral from zero to one minus x squared. And then we've got uh, 3y, so when we integrate that, we're going to get 3 over 2y squared evaluated from 0 to 2 minus z, dz dx. Um, so let's see, I can uh, pull out the 3 halves, minus 1 to 1, and then we have um, 0 to 1 minus x squared. And then we're going to have 2 minus z quantity squared dz dx. And let's see. So I can do uh, a symmetry trick here. Uh, the symmetry of the integrand anyways. And say, um, oh, let me move that a little further. There we go. Um, since this is squared, it doesn't matter which order. Um, I write it in, right? So z minus two squared is the same as two minus z squared. Um, <clears throat> and then that just helps when I do the uh, integration <coughs> uh, because I don't have to worry about a negative sign coming from my u substitution. So I've got uh, zero to, well actually here, let me see. I guess now we've got um, z minus two squared over three minus x squared dx and then I can cancel threes um, and let's see so cruising right along now we've got one half integral from minus one to one and evaluating in I've got uh, one minus x squared uh, minus two quantity cubed and then uh, minus negative two cubed, so that's going to be a, uh, sorry, there's minus negative two cubed, so that's going to be uh, plus eight, and then this whole schmear is integrated dx. Okay, so um, let's see now. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We've got, um, so rewriting this slightly more nicely, um, that's going to be eight minus x squared plus one cubed because we've got uh, one minus two is negative one and then we negate it and pull it out. Yeah, okay. So this guy and so now this is an even function because all powers of x that appear in here come uh, squared so I can use a symmetry trick and make this um, two times that integral uh, from zero to one. Okay, uh, so then I'm looking at the integral from zero to one and I'll have to multiply this mess out, I think. So seven minus three x squared minus three x to the fourth minus x to the sixth. So some algebra, I did that on scratch paper, don't need to bore that, bore you with that. Um, and then we can integrate this. Uh, so we have seven x minus x cubed minus three over five x to the five minus one over seven x to the seven. And that's from zero to one. Uh, so we end up with, let's see, seven minus one minus three fifths minus one seventh, so some gory denominator of 35. Whee! And bringing it all together, there's 184 of them. So there is our answer.